Hello everyone, this is the second part of the AI Wolf tutorial. My name is Klaus, I'm from the University of Tsukuba, and in this tutorial I want to teach you how to program an AI Wolf agent in Python. This tutorial assumes that you already know what is Werewolf. If you don't, check the first video on this series. In this video I will cover three topics. One, how to set up the environment to run AI Wolf games in your computer. Two, the API of the AI Wolf server and how to program a simple agent that talks to the server. Three, creating an agent with a very simple strategy and discuss possible improvements. By the way, all the links and file and code in this tutorial will be available for download in the comments of the video. I set up a GitHub repository with everything that you need. Now let's get started. First things first, we need to download the server from the AI Wolf project page in www.aiwolf.org. You click here in Developer, and then you click on Server, AI Wolf Server. On the Server page, you get the latest version of the AI Wolf platform. As you can see here, there's a warning saying that JDK 11 is required. So even though to program the agent you can use only Python, the, uh, the server actually requires a Java runtime environment to be installed. After we download the zip file, you unzip it on any directory that you like. And let's see what we have. Inside the zip file of the AI Wolf server, there are several files. There is a number of jar files containing the server and the clients. Uh, there are ini files with configurations. There are bat files for Windows users and shell files for Linux and Mac. The first thing that you want to run is the start server script. It will open a GUI that controls the server. Okay, we select here the port number for connection, the number of players, let's set it to five, and then we click on connect. As you can see in the terminal, now the AIWolf server is waiting for clients to connect. Let's load some sample players. For this, you want to run the start GUI server script. This script controls Java players. You select a jar file, the AIWolf client.jar, Then you select the player class file that you want to load and optionally a road for the player. Then we click connect. We are going to connect four agents here. You can see the agents. Here come agents one, two, three, four. Finally, let's load a single Python agent to show how it's done. The library that we will use give us some parameters to load the agent for the command line. So we can run the agent connect it to the local host, name the port. So we do Python. So here we give the local host and the port 10,000. And voila, we can see that the sample Python agent has been connected. Now that we have five agents for our five player games, we can click Start Games, and the game's finished. You can see the log of the game here in the GUI. And it was also printed to the terminal. Finally, a copy of this log is also saved to a file in the log directory. We will look at the log in more details later. One last thing that I want to show you is how to lo load a log file into the log viewer program. So we have here a log viewer. It asks us to drop a log file. The log viewer is intended for demonstration. So it shows the log as if it was a game between real players with some dialogue and some nice graphics too. Unfortunately, this version in the web page is in Japanese. There is an English version that I'll try to have uploaded by the time this tutorial is online.
Okay, so now we have our environment set up and we can go to the second part of the tutorial. Here, I will show you the API for the Werewolf server and describe a very simple agent that reads information from the server, saves it to a log file, and sends the minimal necessary messages back to the server. Using this minimal agent, you will be ready and able to write your own Airwolf agents. The Airwolf server communicates with the clients by sending JSON requests through TCP IP sockets and waits for the response from each client. For this tutorial, we are going to use a library that wraps the message passing part. So all that you need to worry about is to implement an object that implements a few functions. The functions are these we see here in this image. This is how the flow of the one werewolf game looks like in the server. First, initialize is called at the beginning of every game. It contains information about the game rules and initial game state. Then, day start is called to indicate that a new game has a new day has begun. For both of these functions, you don't need to send any response. Next, we come to the meat of the werewolf game, which is the talk call. The library calls talk when it's time for our agent to say something. In AI Wolf, the agents take turns talking, although the order is random. When this function is called, you review what has been said so far and decide what you want your agent to say. Each agent can talk multiple times, depending on the game configuration. So this function will be called several times until your agent has exhausted their turns. After the talking is done, your agent will receive a call for the vote function. They should reply with the ID of the agent they want to remove from town. Note that in AI Wolf, all agents vote at the same time. In the case of a tie, this function may be called again, or one of the tied agents may be chosen randomly. It depends on the game configuration. What happens after the vote depends on the role of your agent. If your agent is a bodyguard or a seer, the server will ask it for the ID of the agent that they want to guard or divine. If your agent is a werewolf, the server will call whisper, which is exactly like talk, but for werewolves only. After that, it will call attack, which is exactly like votes, but for werewolves only, to choose who the werewolves attack. After all of this, or if your agent is just a village and spent the night sleeping, the day ends. The server checks the game state to see if the game itself has ended. If the game has ended, the server calls finish. If this game has not ended yet, the server goes back to day start and the next day begins. There is one last function that I didn't talk about, which is update. Update is how the library actually gives game data for your agent. So before calling most of the other functions, the library will first call update, which passes three objects as parameters. The type of update, pre-talk update, pre-vote update, pre-divine update, etc. The current game state and any other messages from the server, like vote announcements, talk from other agents, results, etc. So, in general, you want to write most of your code to read input and change agent game state inside these update functions. In other functions, you just need to choose your action based on your internal state. All right, let's see how this life cycle would look like in an actual agent. What I'm going to show here is a minimal agent that saves all the information it receives from the server in a log file and returns just the minimum necessary for it to be a valid player. The first thing that we see here is some initialization to open the log file, get the getName function, and the initialize function. I did not talk about the getName function, but it's very simple. It's only called once by the server when your agent connects and asks for this display name of your agent. On the other hand, the server may ask your agent to play several games. In that case, you will receive several calls for initialize, one before each game. Let's focus on initialize. Initialize has three parameters, base info, diff data, and game settings. Game settings and base info, as you can see here, are JSON strings. Game settings contains the rules configuration for this game, which we'll talk about in a, li a little later, and base info contain the game state, who is dead or alive, what is your agent ID, which day is today, etc. Diff data, on the other hand, is wrapped in a pandas data frame. It contains one line for each new information added in the game log, since the last time you received another diff data. Most of the time, you get information about talk, votes, and actions from diff data. Right in the beginning, it's probably empty, 
and sometimes you may receive other kinds of messages. Let's take a look about how the log looks like at this point. So we can see here, get name is empty as expected. In initialize, we can see the contents of game settings. Some things that are important here are the number of players, the role map, which indicates what roles are possible in this game, and the time limit for a response. Next, we see base info, which gives us our agent ID and our role. If we are the werewolf, it will also tell us who are the other werewolves with us in the game. It also gives us information about how many day talks are left and who is still alive. Since the game has just begun, everyone is still alive. Finally, we can see diff data. In the initialization, all it tells us is that we have been initialized and what is our ID and our role. Let's go back to the code and continue. After the initialize function, we have the update function. The update function gives us base info and diff data, we are, which are the same as in initialize. It also gives us the request string, which tells us what comes after this update. For example, before a talk, we get a talk request, and before a vote, a vote request. There are several kinds of requests, such as they start request, they finish request, etc. Use this to change the state of our agent. Next, they start. This function gives no new information, the new information comes in the update. This function also requires no response. You can use it just to change internal state when the day begins. Next, we have talk and whisper. These functions are used to let the server know what your agent wants to say. Again, talk is used by all agents, but whisper is used only by werewolves. So what can your agent say? That depends on the game configuration. This function expects you to return a string. If the server is configured to accept any strings, you can make your agent say whatever you want. On the other hand, by default, the server is configured to require messages to follow the AI Wolf protocol, and we reject any message that does not follow that protocol. The library contains a module, Content Builder, that helps you create a string in the protocol specification. However, this module is a little bit outdated and does not contain all strings for the newest version of the protocol. You can read up the protocol documentation on the AI Wolf website and build your own strings following it. It's not very difficult. Next, we have the action functions, vote, attack, divine, and guard. In each of these functions, you must return an agent ID indicating which agent you want to vote, queue, guard, or attack. Is it worth noting two things? First, agent IDs begin with from one, so be careful when you store information in an array. Second, if you send an invalid action, like here, where we are voting ourselves, the server will choose a random valid target for your action. Remember that the information necessary for these actions is provided by a call to update, and the result of these actions will also come as a call to update. Finally, we have a call to finish at the end of the game. Like in day start, you don't need to do anything other than clean up agent internal state. To make this agent connect to the AI of server, we call the connect parse function in the AIOFPy module, giving our agent object as its parameter. Let's take a quick look at the log produced by this agent. We can see here that after initialize, there is an update call with daily initialize request and the daily finish request. The default game rules of the server do not include talking or voting on day one, so the day starts and begins automatically. Day two is a little bit more interesting we get our first talk request. And you can see in the diff data that agent two started out of the gate voting for agent four. Agent one is coming out as a seer. Here in diff data, the column idx is an incremental index of all the talks in the day. So you can refer back to it if you want to say, for example, that talk number seven was alive. The agent column says which agent sent which message. Let's look at the next update talk. You can see here a few more messages. Our agent, agent5, sent over, which means that it does not want to talk because it's a minimal agent. Agent1, who was a seer, is now saying that they defined agent2 to be a human. And agent2 is asking for anyone to vote for agent4. One thing to note is that after the update request talk, we are the next to talk. So in this case, our turn to talk comes after a talk index 8 from agent 3, which is a good thing since agent 3 is asking people to vote for us. 
Now I'm going to skip to the voting stage. Here's the diff data for the voting stage. This actually comes on the next update after voting. It's important to note that depending on the type of diff data update, the meanings of the columns can change slightly. For example, for the vote type of diff data, IDX is the ID of the agent that voted, and agent is the target of the vote. So here, agent 1 voted for agent 5, agent 2 voted for agent 1, etc. To finish our reading of the log data, let's take a look at the data that we receive from the finish update, which is called at the end of the game. It is worth noting that the game does not explicitly tell us who won, but that's easy to calculate. The finish diff data gives us the roles of all agents, as we can see here, agent 1 is a seer, agent 2 is a possessed, agent 3 is a villager. And we can see which agents are alive on the stats map of base info. If any werewolf is alive, that means that the werewolves won. All right, with this information, you already know enough to start programming your simple AI wolf agent. Before we begin, though, I want to talk a little bit about something that is important for AI agents. How do we set up the server for headless play? In the beginning of the video, I show you how to run the GUI server, which can be useful for demonstrations in debugging. But if you want to train your agents on hundreds or thousands of games, we need a way to find to run many games with the same agents. The way to do this is using the auto start script. Auto start script will read the configuration file with the name of your agents to run and the game rules file with the settings of the game. Let's look at these configuration files. The first configuration file is autostarter.ini. It contains connection information for the agents and the servers. We can set up here the connection port, the number of games to run, the number of agents to run, and finally, which agents to connect. As you can see, we have one line for each agent. For each line, first, we have the agent identification, which does not need to be the same as the agent name, but it does need to be unique. Then we have the type of agent, Java, Python, or C Sharp, and then the path for the agent script. Optionally, we can give our uh, roles for the agents. The path can be either the full path or the path relative to the lib parameter at the top, like we have here. The second configuration file is for the game settings. You can see that there are several game rules that you can modify, such as the number of times that the agent can speak every day, if the votes are visible, is vote visible, if there are votes or talking in the first day, etc. There are two options here that are particularly important. The first one is, is validate uterus. If this option is true, the server will reject any talk that does not follow the AI Wolf protocol. This guarantees that you know what to expect from other agents in terms of talking. On the other hand, if you set this option for false, anything goes. You can have your agents talk using natural language or even zeros and ones. It does get much more difficult to program the agents though. The second important option is time limit, which is how long the server will wait for a response before kicking out a player. For the AI Wolf competition, we use a standard value of one second, but you might want to make this a little bit bigger for debugging, or if you want to set up a server to play over the network. This ends our tour over the AI Wolf server API. Next, we will show how to use this knowledge to create an AI Wolf agent that uses a very simple strategy to play. The agent that we are going to create is the Oh my God, you suck agent. OMGUS. OMGUS is what we call a simple strategy of werewolf newbies. Basically, if anyone accuses us of being a werewolf, then obviously they are a werewolf themselves. So our agent will listen to what the other agents are saying and doing. It will make a list and give agents on that list some points every time they do something that could be dangerous to us. Finally, OMGUS will be aggressive against the agent to the highest number of points on that list. It is a little bit like a porcupine. Anyone who gets calls gets hurt. We are going to see how the OMGUS agent is programmed and then play a few games of the OMGUS against the other agents. And then talk a little bit about how we could improve this or other agents. So let's take a look at the OMGUS code. 
I have changed the order of some functions in this agent to make it easier to explain. By the way, I will repeat that the code of this and the previous agent are in a GitHub repository linked on the description of the video. So you can look at it yourself and change it to your heart's content. The first thing that you should note about the omen us is that we are adding two random numbers to the end, end of the agent name. Why do this? Well, the AO of server will calculate win ratio statistics after multiple games. And if two agents have the same name, their victories will be added together. By giving the agent a random name, we can put two instances of the same agent and get separate statistics. Next, in the initialize function, we will create a player scoring list from the number of players in the game. All players begin with zero points, except for our own agent, which begins with minus 10,000 points. Also note that agent's ID in Wolf begin with one, so be careful with programming. The last line of initialize sets up a variable that contains which agent is in the list has the highest hate score. We are going to update this variable every time the update function is called. Next, we have the three action functions, vote, attack, and divine. Let's just have the agent vote or attack whoever is the player that they hate the most. Now we have the update function. The update function has information about who is saying what or who is voting for whom. So we are going to update our hate list in here too. First, let's see what kind of update request it is. The daily initialize update happens only once at the beginning of each day. So it's the perfect time to check which agents are alive and which agents are dead. We don't need to hate the agents that have died. So we update the score of dead agents by removing 10,000 points from them. Next, we process any new rows on diff data. We are interested in two types of rows, vote rows, which contains voting records, and talk rows, which indicate that an agent has spoken. First, let's process vote rows. Remember that for vote rows, the IDX column says who was voted, and the agent column says who was voted for. So, if we find our ID is in the agent column, this means that we have been voted for, and we give the voting agent 100 points. Now let's process the talk rows. We are only interested when the other agents talk about us, so we filter the text column, selecting only the texts that contains our ID. Remember that talk rows are different from vote rows, and the agent column talk contains the ID of the agent that spoke. Next, we process the text. Our agent is not very smart, so we will only perform the minimum of text parsing. If the text contains the word wild wolf, or vote, we will assume the worst and give the speaking agent 10 hate points. On the other hand, if those two words are not in the text, we will still find it a bit suspicious that they are talking about us and give them one hate point. Finally, we update the value of the self-hate variable with the ID of the agent with the highest amount of hate points. And we are done with the update function. Finally, we have the talk and whisper calls. Remember that the talk call is used by all agents during the day. And the whisper call is used by the werewolves to discuss who they should attack and general strategy. For OMG US, we are going to write these two functions as follows. For talk, we have three sentences. The first one requesting other agents to vote for the agent that we hate. The second one accusing the agent that we hate for being a werewolf. And the third one affirming that we are voting for the agent that we hate. We will choose randomly one of these three sentences every time we have to say something. On the other hand, for the whisper call, we just tell the other werewolves that we should attack the agent that I hate. And this ends the OMG US agent. Let's see how our agent performs against other agents. First, let's modify the alter start ini file to include the OMG US players. The first thing that we do is that we're going to play 10 games with 10 players. We choose seven sample Java agents. Then we will include the simple Python agent that we programmed before, and we will include two OMG US players. Now let's run this. It will take a little bit of time. We run Auto starter. 
and starts first game, second game, third game, fourth game. Okay, so now we have, when we use auto run, in the end, we are going to get a total of the, of the, of the win rates. So we can see here that the reporter, the simple agent, had a 0 0.5 win rate. It won once as a werewolf, four times as a villager, it played once as a seer and once as a bodyguard and didn't win. OMG US won three times out of three as a werewolf and then two times out of four as a werewolf. Uh, the first one seems to have a little bit of a higher victory rate, 0 0.6. The second one got 0 0.5. The sample agents, they got around 0 0.4 victory rate, and this one got 0 0.6. So it was, okay, not super special, but it's a bunch of very simple agents. We can probably do better. Before we finish this video, let's think a little bit about how we could improve this and other agents. The OMG US agent is very simple. For example, it does not know when someone is defending or supporting it. It also does not know what to do if it receives a role of seer or bodyguard. There are many small improvements that you could make to the basic idea of this agent. If you want to do something a little smarter, you could try to do some sort of machine learning to learn what kind of talks indicate that an agent is more likely to be a werewolf or more likely to be a villager. However, there are some problems with that approach. For example, our own agent will act exactly the same if it's a werewolf or a villager. The agent is not aware of its role it might be better to make an agent aware of the different winning conditions if it's a werewolf or if it's a human. Even if it makes the agent easier to read, it would also make it more interesting to play against. Another similar issue is that the agent does not respond to the actions of other players. The OMG US agent sometimes requests that other agents vote this way or that way, but it never responds to any request of other agents. Again, if all agents only speak their mind but never reach out to each other, it's not a very interesting game, just a bunch of Elisas talking past each other. So there are many things that are necessary to make a more interesting agent. I hope that these ideas inspire you to create a cool AI that can play the werewolf game. That's it for this video. In the final video of this tutorial, I will interview Professor Osawa about the current research and future directions for the AI Wolf project. Thank you for listening. And if you have questions, you can leave a comment on this video or you can message me on Twitter. You can also join the AI Wolf Slack. The link is in the description. Now, go make some werewolf agents.